Okay, so I just got back from seeing Godzilla X Kong. It was freaking awesome, but we got to wait a few days for other people to see it before we just start like blatantly giving away spoilers and stuff in videos. So until then, we're going to watch this. This video depicting and showing us what would happen if Godzilla were to die in the monster verse because it could happen. Also, check out my popcorn bucket from the new movie. It's it's really actually it's kind of cool. My movie theater had like cool buckets, but really lame cups. See, this is the Godzilla that came on top of my cup. This thing's awful. No thagomizer tail, no elbow spike doesn't even really look like Godzilla. Look at that goofy SOB right there. Either way, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe to Dangerville, and let's get into it. We all know how Godzilla 2014 ends. The big G-Man is lured in to combat the male and female mutos, proceeds to get tag-teamed, and Whoa. was well on his way to defeat until human special forces managed to blow up the muto nest. Distracting the monsters just enough for Godzilla to get the upper hand, eventually killing them both. But what if the nest was never destroyed? Due to the effects of the Muto's EMP abilities, Godzilla was without his most powerful weapon and severely weak. And the agility of the male Muto combined with the brute force of the female had the G-Man overwhelmed. While I never doubt Godzilla in any of his battles, he does always manage to come out on top usually. You know what's crazy I'm thinking about? Evolved Godzilla from the new movie? I could not imagine if that thing was up against the Mutos. The circumstances of the 2014 Muto battle were leading Godzilla to his untimely demise. This video will go into that what if scenario and see what would have happened to the MonsterVerse version of planet Earth and its inhabitants if the Mutos weren't distracted Damn. and continued on to defeat Godzilla. Seriously though guys, I know a lot of you get upset when Godzilla's death is ever brought up, but just allow this to kind of play out in your head. It's all just a theory. So stomp the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get to it. It is fun to talk about alternate things. It's okay if Godzilla dies sometimes, you know? He's a, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's sad as hell, but that means we're just gonna get a new Godzilla. So how would the lore change if the nest was never blown up during the ending of Godzilla 2014? That S neg S the neg the neg was neg est egg nest. If that <laughs> if that egg nest hatched, neg est Jesus. Godzilla would have eventually been pummeled to death. It is a bizarre thought to comprehend, I know, but in his current state at that point in the timeline, he was much more weak than we last saw him. And the Mutos are a Gojira killing species in the lore, so they there are. No lie. The potential last of the Godzilla's gone. His body would have been used as a source of atomic energy to help incubate the nest in its last moments before the eggs began to hatch. And once the thousands of infant mutos burst from their eggs, they would have an almost never-ending buffet of Gojira energy to feed off of until they were old enough to venture out into the world. The city of San Francisco would be utterly destroyed and abandoned, becoming the prime example it kind of, of the devastation is. a muto infestation could cause. With Godzilla gone, the Mutos were in full parental mode and had no reason to ever leave the nest. They wouldn't allow mankind to get close enough to do any damage. You know what's crazy though? The Mutos in the comics, those babies are all gonna kill each other. You think Mutos just like take over the planet like a giant swarm of animals, but no, they kill each other until like one arises as the Queen Muto and then they become the Prime. It's like a whole thing. And their EMP effect kept any air attacks from ever happening. What we don't know in the lore is if a nuclear bomb could kill a Muto. I would imagine it is possible, but the ethical nature of dropping atom bombs all up the west coast would slow the political leader's actions. And since the monsters in the real movie stole the bomb in the first place to fuel their nest, I would imagine that the blast may just give them even more energy if the force of the explosion didn't kill them outright. I agree. So instead of going that route, mankind forfeits the city and begins to plan the next course of action against the Muto invasion. Ooh. After some time, the young Mutos would leave the destroyed city to find territory of their own. And this is when the chaos would really take over. The young would have yet to have gotten super massive, so conventional weaponry would still work on them. That's the true. only issue was that thousands of these smaller, harder to find Mutos were going out in all directions. Damn. But when they were found, it was a hell of a show. Bombing runs and fire from aircraft were able to kill many of the young Mutos, but plenty yet still survived. All in all, mankind couldn't keep up with the Mutos on their own, and Damn. the two parent Mutos were still occupying San Francisco, still nesting and waiting to be able to have another batch of eggs. Jesus. If mankind didn't do something, the entire continents of North and South America would have been taken over by the Mutos within the next decade, if they even had that long. 
so a more unconventional weapon had to be called upon to kill the originators of the Muto Plague. I know they don't have enough consistency in the MonsterVerse for this. For some reason, they're always changing things and it drives me crazy. But where the hell was the Queen Muto in King of the Monsters during 2014? Where was she? she had to be remotely nearby like she showed up at the end? She was in walking distance. Oh. Monarch had already begun building a presence on the legendary Skull Island and much of the technology that was invented after the 2014 attack would still go into effect in this story, but it would happen even faster with the Muto apocalypse underway. Kong, who was still much larger than he was in 1973, would be captured and contained the exact same way that they got him to relax in the final Godzilla vs Kong scenario. Using the strange Titan calming concoction, Kong would be forced to become humanity's final weapon against the Mutos. Damn, what dude, would that's awesome. Next in this what if scenario would play out a lot like how it happened in Godzilla vs. Kong, with the ape being ferried across the ocean. But instead of going all the way to Antarctica, Kong was sent straight towards San Francisco, the Muto Nest. Kong would eventually make it to the coast of America and then be set free. Kong would be led to San Francisco and the Muto Nest. The nature of the Titans would instantly put them up against each other in a massive three-way brawl. Damn. Kong, in shock at first, he's never seen other creatures quite like the Mutos before, would take the fight's first massive hits. Kong would need either his axe or the beast glove for sure, dude. But we know Kong is a clever beast. Using the environment, he would leap from building to building much faster than Godzilla was moving during his fight with the Mutos leaving That's the monsters true. to constantly chase the ape around. Kong would quickly learn how to evade the Muto, and at one point he would use his wit to jump off the side of a building and directly on the flying male Muto. Look at him go! The beast would crash to the ground and Kong would have just the opening he needed to go in for the kill. Grabbing both of the Muto's wings, Kong rips them off the male Muto's body and uses the creature's own bones to stab it repeatedly until it stopped moving. He would too! The female Muto, now enraged, charges Kong and rams him directly into a building. Suddenly, a burst of light blinds the entire area surrounding the battlefield. Oh yeah! It was Mothra. The Muto takeover and death of Godzilla had forced the monster to hatch from her egg and grow into her final form much earlier than the real timeline here. That would the happen! The Muto was in awe of Mothra and was extremely distracted. She was no longer focusing her attention on Kong, and he knew now was the time to strike. In the midst of the rubble, Kong notices a massive section of a collapsed building's skeletal steel that was roughly shaped in a way similar to some of the giant trees he remembered from Skull Island. No way, man, that's the awesome. From the rubble and runs up behind the female Muto, who was now distracted and attempting to fight Mothra. Kong then grabbed the monster's head from behind, and in a similar fashion as to how Godzilla actually killed her in the movie, he proceeds to jam the steel beam down the Muto's throat until it wouldn't go any further. Damn! The Muto makes some horrendous noises as the life leaves its body, and Kong was victorious. The battle is won, but the war is far from over. The babies. For the next year or so, mankind, with the help of Kong and Mothra, would slowly take out any juvenile Muto they could find. The Muto's numbers were drastically lowered, and the few dozen that managed to reach near adulthood would then do what they do, and fight one another for what little bit of resources they could spare for themselves at this point. Yeah, that! And just like in the actual lore of the Monsterverse, they would eventually kill each other until only one or two alphas were left. Yes. So at this point <laughs> in the theory, out of the thousands of Muto's that hatched, only a handful were left still alive. And knowing that they had a giant ape along with the rest of mankind coming after them, they disappeared. Perhaps they would come out again to attack one day, but for now, it appeared like the apes, along with Mothra, had won. The remaining titans like Rodan and Ghidorah are never bothered. With the Muto threat, there was no need to awaken the titans to teach humanity a lesson. So they would continue to sleep. Kong, now considered a hero of Earth, would be taken back to Skull Island, and Mothra would mysteriously disappear to the public. But in our world, let's say she went and found a baby Gojira egg and vowed to protect it till it hatched one day. That'd be the After happy years ending. years of Muto rampages, millions of lives lost and trillions of dollars worth of damage, Damn. the Americas were finally able to rebuild. The Mutos never managed to swim across the oceans and give any of the other continents any issues. But that didn't stop the rest of the world from putting all their efforts into making sure that next time a Titan attack came, they would all be ready. So there it is, guys. It We'd may never not get be Mecha Godzilla. Us would want with the big G Man dying, but the potential of a baby Gojira taking his place is a fun concept. But I do want to hear what you guys think would happen next in this theory. If this video does well enough, I may just take video. some of your ideas and continue on. 
there's still a whole lot more that could happen with Godzilla not alive in the MonsterVerse. I'm thinking about the repercussions of what could happen. We pretty much need Godzilla, so eventually we'd be screwed. I don't know, maybe Kong could really- No, there's, there's no way. I love the thought of a Kong working alongside humans. I mean, we basically have that now anyways, but it would be like much more Kong specific. I don't know. He'd have like a bulletproof vest. There's some crazy possibilities, but ultimately we need Godzilla. Plus who knows if space Godzilla is going to come down or something one day. If they have any further villains plans for the MonsterVerse, we're going to need Godzilla. Basically, eventually we would die, but still a crazy concept. This was fun though. I like this. This was a good video. Leave a like, subscribe, subscribe to Dangerville. Link down below and I'll see you next time. <laughs>